So I've been, um, with the luxury of time, been nerding out on yoga philosophy, which most of you know, because you come like every week to my classes. So I'm really um, doing a lot in that world. But one of the big, one of the things I'm getting to do right now is to really dive into the yoga sutras. I think I brought this one up last week. Um, sutra, chapter two, part of one. Uh, tapas, Padyaya, Ishvari, Pranidhana, Kriya Yoga. Right? I'll tell you how to memorize the other class. Tapas, Svadhyaya, Ishvari, Pranidhana, Kriya Yoga. So, like, to break it down loosely again from last week, I think we talked about it, but tapas is like fire, right? That's like that um, leaning into discomfort, or, um, but in the name of purifying and clearing away, right? And so the way that I'm interpreting this sutra specifically, tapas is like when that discomfort comes up, right? And so spadhyaya means self-study. So it's like when discomfort comes up, we notice it and we start to self-reflect, right? Ishvari panidana means to surrender to that which is greater than us. So it's this practice of feeling discomfort, noticing it, reflecting on it, and then letting it go. Because Kriya Yoga means practice, the practice of yoga. So the way that I'm interpreting this lately is that the practice of yoga is actually just surrendering. Like it's this constant dance of feeling something, noticing it, and then letting it go over and over and over again. Um, but what tends to happen for me where it gets sticky is that my mind will notice something and then it will really gravitate towards the story of that thing. And then it will try to figure it out. And that's when suffering will start to come in for me or stress, right? And so that's also a thing that I start to notice and then let go, right? So it's this like constant dance and cycle, of noticing sensation, reflecting on it to a point where we understand, but then letting it go over and over and over again. And some days that's easy, some days that's not. Um, but that's just kind of a concept I've been playing around with quite a bit lately as stuff is coming up, right? Because in the healing process, what tends to happen is that stuff bubbles to the surface, right? So it's like peeling layers of an onion, right? So like we, we start to, we have a transcendental, transcendental moment where we overcome something and we're like, cool, I made it, I've arrived at this place. And then something else surfaces, right? That's the nature of it. And so then you notice something else and you let it go, you notice something else and you let it go, right? And so um, as that happens, we start to realize our capacity to hold a lot, which is really cool. Anyway. So that's kind of that. If we were in the same room together, I'd ask if you had any questions. <laughs> but you know. so um, I'll just kind of let you chew on that. Um, as far as the practice today is concerned, we're going to do some more Kriya work. I'm really finding it powerful to help with this practice of letting go, right? Um, to drop out of the mind and into other layers of our intelligence. So we'll do lots of movement here, um, some core stuff and some breath stuff today. Sound good? It does okay. <clears throat> okay, so we'll start with a with a the centering practice. So you're all in a beautiful seated position. If it's comfortable for you wherever you're at, go ahead and close your eyes. Any wiggles, let them go, and just come into your body, into your space. Right again, recognizing right. So it's very different to do a home practice, right? Even if you have somebody on the internet leading you, you're in your space, right? So it might take an extra step for you to really drop in and allow that to be a part of the process. So maybe it's an extra exhale, maybe an extra little wiggle. And then let the breath help you to tether the mind to your internal landscape. So noticing the movement of the breath. Get curious about the quality of the breath. And notice for a moment as you meditate on your breath, how your body knows how to surrender, knows how to let go. It does it every time you exhale. 
Today is Mother's Day, which is a complex holiday for many of us, right? And as you breathe here and notice and practice the surrendering over and over again, can you feel the part of you that is mother? Sometimes this is called your, the, the booty aspect, booty. compassionate, loving, caring, nurturing energy. Maybe for a moment, surrendering any stories the mind has attached to mother, that title, that identification and being with the energy of mother. Can you feel how your body innately knows how to nurture itself, support itself? Let's take a deep breath in through the nose and out the mouth. Okay, and then if you'd like to take the palms of the hands together and rub them, please. <clears throat> and then if you'd like to, we'll come to Anjali Mudra, so hand at heart center. And again, let the thumbs really press into the sternum and feel the sternum rise to meet the thumbs. So you're opening up the heart. This is Mudra, you're putting your body in an intentional shape here. And then if you'd like to join me, we'll tune in with an O. So take a deep breath in to chant. And your next exhale, you can go ahead and release the mudra. <clears throat> so we'll stay seated for a little bit longer. So if you need to adjust or wiggle in any way, please go for it. Um, we're going to start with a pranayama. This one is called breath of light. And it's relatively straightforward. This is actually a really nice alternative to Kapalabhati, breath of fire. So if you're ever in a place where you're in your moon cycle or you're nauseous or just doesn't feel appropriate for you to do breath of fire, um, breath of light is a nice alternative, so just kind of keep that in your breath box. Okay, so <clears throat> it's essentially a seven-part inhale through the mouth, like you're sipping like really rich, deep, like beautiful oil as you pull energy up the spine, and then a very gentle exhale through the nose. Okay, and so I'll kind of walk you through it. So again, finding that tall spine, feel the crown of the head, balancing on top of the tailbone. Let the belly soften, and the jaws relax. <clears throat> and just take a complete but gentle exhale through the nose and then start to sip air through the lips to the count of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lift the pelvic floor, hold the inhale, bring the drishti, the gaze to the third eye, so the spot above and between the brows. Keep the shoulders soft. And then gently exhale out the nose. And then begin again, inhale to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Keep pulling the energy up the spine. And then exhale through the nose. And again, inhale to one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, hold, lift the pelvic floor. Exhale, release through the nose. Okay, move at your own pace here, so you're gonna hold seven. It's as if as you breathe, continuing the pranayama, you feel this light being stoked inside of you. But it's gentle. Stay with it. Three more rounds, please, at your own pace. And just breathe naturally. Feel the lightness within and around your body. And a soft strength. And as you're ready, take a deep breath in and out. If your eyes are closed, go ahead and open them. We'll transition onto our backs, you know, but you guys know me. So any sort of movement you need before you get down onto your back, <clears throat> taking your time. Okay, and once you get there, we'll have our knees bent with our feet on the floor. Okay. <clears throat> and maybe do a couple of windshield wipers with the knees. Nice bit. And then come to center here. And with the shoulders staying nice and heavy, just reach the arms up, right? So I let's think like zombie arms, just like for right. <laughs> If you're really relaxed here through the arms, you can feel the weight of the arms, the arm bones, okay? And then as best you can, depending on what's going on with the wrists and the hands, you're gonna rotate the palms up towards the ceiling and spread the fingers pretty wide here, okay? Keep the chest relaxed and the shoulders pretty heavy. And then just start to squeeze and open your hands. Yeah. So we're warming up fascia, right? Into the forearms. And I obviously selfishly picked this for myself because I was kayaking for hours yesterday. <laughs> My hands are really tired. So this is kind of a nice movement to soften fascia, get some movement going on in the joints here. Okay. 
right? So keep at it. You'll probably start to feel some heat building somewhere in the forearms or the hands, okay? For five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead and spread the hands wide. Maybe root the palm, the heels of the hands up towards the ceiling. Continue to stay really soft through the shoulders here, okay? Now, bend the elbows and bring them down to the floor so the elbows are in line with the shoulders, okay? The palms are facing forward, so you're in these like funky robot arm shape, right? So the palms are facing towards your legs. The hands are still spreading wide. And the elbows are in line with the, with the shoulders here. So some of us might already start to feel a bit of a stretch here. Let the chest open up. Feel the shoulder blades relaxing on the back, okay? And then slowly start to pull the backs of the hands towards the floor, okay? And then rotate in the other direction. So press the palms up and then towards the floor. You may or may not come in contact with the floor depending on what's going on with your with your arms and your shoulders here. But just kind of moving back and forth. So internal and external rotation of the shoulders. And as you do this, I want you to notice what you feel in the back body, like what's going on with your shoulder blades. Do you feel them kind of pressing into the floor as you move in one direction or the other? Okay. And that reminder that we have a lot going on in the in the brachial plexus, that the shoulder area, the arms, right? You've got some nerves and stuff there. So if you start to feel ends and needles or tingling sensation in the hands or anywhere else, just Soften the depth of this movement. Let's do it a few more times. Oh. This is a really nice, gentle shoulder and arm opening. It's also for me very educational. Like I can get kind of more information on what's going on with my shoulders, the front and the back. Okay, maybe two more times. Okay. The next time the backs of the hands are on the floor, so you're in this like goal post shape of the hands, go ahead and just stay there, relax the arms down, okay? And then again, windshield wiper the knees from side to side. Really heavy through the thighs. <clears throat> Find your breath again. Okay. And then we'll come to center. <clears throat> and we'll do a little bit of core work. We'll start to build up the heat. So, Take these nice relaxed arms and hands, interlace the fingers behind the head. This will be similar to what we did last week if you were with, with us, right? So the elbows are gonna come up towards the ceiling and then you bring the elbows back a bit here. So what this does is kind of move the shoulder blades to the back body, here, right? So the elbows can be pointing forward and press them back towards the front of the head. Here. Okay, take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, keep the head and neck relaxed as you lift your head and tuck your chin. Okay, stay here and then twist a little bit to the left. And lift that right shoulder blade off the floor even more if you can, okay? Then as you inhale, come back from center and lower the head down, okay? Exhale, press the low back into the floor. You lift your head, twist to the right. Maybe exhale a little more as you lift the left shoulder blade off the floor. And then come back through center, inhale, lower down. Now the throat is soft the whole time. Exhale, lift. Twist to the left. Maybe continue to exhale as you twist a little bit more. Inhale, back through center and then down. And again, exhale, lift. Follow out the belly, flip to the right. Just a little more. Inhale back through center and lower down. And again, exhale, lift. Flip to the left. Just a little more. Good, you guys. Inhale back through center and then down. Exhale, lift. Flip to the right. Just a little more. Come back through center, lower down, relax. Come back to those goal post arms. When should I bring the knees from side to side? Okay. And this time, let's keep the arms where they're at unless this is creating some sort of discomfort and then please adjust, okay? And we're gonna lift the feet off of the floor now. <clears throat> okay, so knees are bent, soles of the feet are here. Oh, but I can see all your beautiful feet. <laughs> okay, press your low back into the floor so you're tilting your pelvis, like the pubic bone's coming up toward the lower ribs, okay? Keeping the pelvis where it's at, just slowly start to lower the right heel down to the floor, okay? And then inhale, come up. Exhale, left heel comes down. Inhale up, good. Exhale, right heel. Slow and steady, inhale up. Exhale, where can you soften? Soften the throat, inhale up. Exhale, right. Inhale up. Exhale, left. 
Inhale up, stay relaxed. Exhale right. Inhale up. Exhale left. Inhale up. Exhale right. Inhale up. One more time on the left side. Exhale left. Inhale up. Stay here if you can. Rest if you're feeling any pain though. Okay. Can you squeeze your inner thighs together? Keep pressing the low back down so you're really engaged in the low belly. And then just start to rock your knees from side to side. It's a little movement that's very controlled. Notice if as you start to do this, the shoulders are accumulating any tension. Can you relax the arms down, soften the shoulder blades to the floor as you just rock from side to side. Breathing for five, keep squeezing the thighs, four, three, two, one, come to center, hug the knees into the body, squeeze them in, and then just rock a little bit from side to side on the low back. Nice. Then grip your knees with your hands and slowly start to work, the, lower the feet to the floor, but hold the legs up with your hand. Okay, so the only thing that's holding them up is the strength of the hand. So everything from the belly button to the feet is relaxed. Breathe deep into the low belly. Exhale. And more like that, inhale. Exhale, feet to the floor. And one more time, once you over the knees from side to side. Good. Okay. Now we're gonna transition to tabletop. So if you find it fun, you can roll up, right? So where you grab the knees and roll on your spine, eventually crossing the shins if that's not your in your wheelhouse. However you want to get there, right? <clears throat> Nice. Right, so even in our physical practice, it's still that that practice of practice. Svadhyaya, Vishvari Panidana, Kriya Yoga. Right, so what do you notice? And how can you let it go? Okay. So we're here, and if it works for you, hook the toes, and the hands are spread wide, and we're pretty acquainted with what's going on with the scapula, so I want you to press the, the shoulder blade into the back body, so you're really like engaged to the, the midsection here. And then just start to shift your weight kind of forward, or this is more of like a forearm stretch than anything else, so press the finger pads down as you move forward, keep the shoulders broad, and then lean back till your bum almost comes over your heels to stretch to the feet, so you're just going to sway forward and back, okay? So it's gonna help if you really press the finger pad down as the shoulders shift past the wrists, okay? Couple more times. Good, then come to center. Couple of cat cows, but this time as you round the spine, press the tops of the feet into the floor around the spine. And then curl the toes under as you come into your cow. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. One more like that, please. Exhale. Inhale. Keep the toes hooked, shift back into a child's pose just for a moment, okay? The arms are long. This gives you a little bit of a baby heart opener here. Bring the palms of the hands together and then bend your elbows till your thumbs come towards your, the back of your head or your neck. And then walk your uh, elbows forward even more. You're creating a bit of traction here to stretch through the back. Take a deep breath in. And out. Okay. And then release the hands back down to the floor. Come back to your tabletop. And then up to downward facing dog, please. Um, Good. Okay. So we're going to find your integrity in the shape, please, right? So we're wrapping the triceps back. 
right? So we're moving the shoulder blades to the back body. So the collarbones are broad here. Check out what the hands are up to. Can you keep the fingers spread wide? And then lift your low belly to send your six bones up and back as you root down through the heels. Relax the head. Take one more breath here. Okay. And then slowly start to walk your feet forward towards your hands until you're in a hold at the front of your mat. Good. Take a halfway lift, find length, and then exhale, hold. Keep your head. Maybe do some wrist circles. Okay. And then eventually walk your hands up your legs and come up to standing. <clears throat> So take a couple of moments here um, in your Tadasana, just kind of shake the arms out, shoulders out, the legs, okay? And then I'm gonna have you um, step into a wide stance. So you're gonna bring the feet about as wide as maybe your wrists, your arms are extended. Okay, with the toes out about 45 degrees, so that when you bend your knees, they track towards the center and along the center of your feet, so this feels safe for you, okay? So we're gonna do this Kriya, it's called Adya Kriya, okay? So we're gonna take the middle finger and the ring finger and curl them down, right? And the pointer finger, pinky, and thumb are out. So this one can feel a little intense on the wrist, so just keep that in mind, okay? So we're gonna bring the hands to the shoulders here. So one thing I want you to notice, I'm not like bowing my back a lot, I am squeezing my shoulder with it though. So there's a big kind of difference between when we're doing spinal extension or when we're squeezing the shoulder blades. I want you to focus really on squeezing the shoulder blades, okay? There might be a little subtle extension that's fine, but just try not to do it too deep, okay? So we're here. You're squeezing your shoulder blades. The legs are straight to begin with, okay? So this is your inhale. You're gonna lift your pelvic floor in this shape, and then as you exhale through the mouth, you're gonna bend your knees and press your arms forward, so So this is where you might start to feel a stretch here, that's okay. Feel the strength of the muscles around the shoulder blades, keeping you nice and steady here. And then inhale, straighten the knees, bring the arms back. And that's it. You're gonna shh. Yeah, and then inhale, back. And we're gonna do this for a little while. <laughs> Keep the tops of the shoulders soft as you move here. And if your body wants to move faster or slower than me, Please feel free to do so. Kind of the theory with these Kriyas is the faster moving postures have the ability to move energy more efficiently, but we don't want you getting busy, okay? So just kind of be mindful of that. Lift the pelvic floor as you stand straight up. Nice, you guys. Let yourself get a little fierce with this if you want to. Nice, stay with it. Next time you're out straight, stay. Hold the exhale if you can. This is an intense one. Okay, and then inhale, release. Whew. Shake it out. I would pick this Kriya when it's like really hot out. <laughs> okay, shake it out, shake it out, and then come to stillness. 
And just notice, steady your breath. If that created an excessive amount of heat in your body, take a clearing breath out the mouth. So, if needed. Okay. We're going to stay in this white stance and transition into the Virabhadrasana to your warriors. So, you're going to pivot your right foot out, bend into that right knee. Okay. Now, Mindful that the knee is above or behind the ankle. You might widen your stance here, but keep the arms relaxed to begin with. Focus more on the stability of the lower half of the body, right? So the right heel has a little more weight in it so that you feel the hamstring, the backs of the thighs look up here. And then both feet are pulling towards each other like you're trying to squish your mat up. So you really feel that the insides of the thighs wake up. At the same time, the outside of the left thigh is lifting up as well. So you're really stable through the pelvis here. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, just gently extend the arms out to the side. Breathe. Keep that engagement in the low belly, okay? And then start to twist your arms in the opposite direction. Moving all the way from the shoulder socket to the fingertips, right? And if you want to, as like I'm doing, you can start to shift your gaze forward and back. Continue to study your breath. One more time. Come back to your warrior two, please. Soften the tops of the shoulders, exhale. Inhale, find exalted warrior. Exhale, stay, tuck the right hip underneath you as you charge the left knee forward. So maybe you get a little more opening in that hip. And then maybe this right elbow bends, cradling the skull with your hand. And maybe this left hand drifts behind you. So the elbow bends here, it's resting on the low back. Keep pulling the inner thighs towards each other. Take a deep breath in, please. And as you exhale, we'll transition to supported side angle. So this forearm comes to the thigh. Really use it to keep the space in the right side of the body. Then swoop the left arm forward and up. Extended side angle. Breathe here. Get light on those right toes, please. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, we're gonna to transition to a wide leg forward fold. So just drift this left hand down. Bring the right hand down, pivot your feet. So they're parallel or pigeon toed. Okay, find a halfway lift here. And exhale, fold. Let the head hang. Maybe you sway. Then inhale to a halfway lift. Pivot your toes out to 45 degrees again, like you did before. Tuck your tailbone as you bend your knees and roll yourself back up into a goddess shape. Yeah, really strong through the thighs. Hands to your thighs, please. Peel the hands right up to the hip creases here. Press them in. Sink the hips down as you press the hands down and shorten your shoulders up. So we'll keep compressing the back here a little bit. It might feel nice to sway a little from side to side. Try to keep the tailbone tucked. Yeah. Okay. Then release the pressure of the hands. Sweep the arms out and up. And then we'll exhale and transition into warrior two on the other side. So bend and pivot the left foot, bend the left knee. Again, the left hip is tucked underneath you as you charge the left knee forward. Inner thighs are pulling towards each other. Right outer thigh is lifting up. Toes are light. And then as you're ready, find that twisting action again. In the arms and the shoulders. Where is the mind going? What's it focusing on? Good, okay. Come back to center, please. 
Exhale. Inhale, exalted warrior. Exhale to stay, and maybe you come into this little like deeper shoulder opener. So bending the left elbow, tucking the right forearm underneath behind the back. You might even let the weight of your skull rest in your hand for the stretch in the side body here. Take a deep breath in, please. And exhale, transition to your supported side angle. Forearm on the thigh, right arm swoops down, forward and up. So the bicep is along the ear. Keep the chest nice and open here, please. That right glute is wrapping down towards your right heel. Take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, we'll transition to that wide leg forward fold again. So bring the right hand down, left hand down, pull the feet. Parallel or pigeon toe, and find your halfway lift on your inhale. Hollow out the belly so the tailbone tucks and the low back is broad as you can raise. Exhale, fold. And shake your head. Then one more time, we'll find a halfway lift. Pivot the toes out 45 degrees. Okay. Bend the knees as you tuck the tailbone. Strong thighs, rise yourself up to goddess. Good. And I'll leave it up to you. Okay, so if the legs are really tired, straighten up. If you're into it, I'm going to keep the knees bent and we're going to bring the arms out to the side. So the elbows are the same height as the shoulders. And then find those cactus arms again, like we did on the floor when we're laying down. So the elbows are in line with the shoulders. The palms are forward. Again, we're not bowing the chest forward, we're squeezing the shoulder blades. It's a very different movement, okay? So you wanna keep the pubic bone pulling up towards the low ribs. And then slowly from here, as you're squeezing your shoulder blades together, start to tuck your chin. And then from there, keep squeezing the shoulder blades together, start to rotate, internally rotate the shoulders. So you're gonna to start to bring the, hip, the forearms down towards the floor, but keep the elbows at the same height, yeah, as the shoulders. You kind of see how far you go here. And then inhale, come on up. Keep the chin tucked though, and then see about the external rotation. So just press the back of the hands back behind you. Keep the shoulders in line with the elbows, vice versa. Breathe, and then one more time. Rotate the hands down. Okay. Inhale up. Strong low belly. And then exhale, relax. Okay, shake it out. And then I'll meet you at the front of our mats in Sadasana. Take a clearing breath, please. Inhale through the nose. Open your mouth, exhale. Good. Inhale your arms out and up, please. Exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step back, downward facing dog, please. Take an inhale here. And then exhale, we'll shift ourselves forward to plank. Continue to exhale, lower knees, chest to chin. Inhale to your back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three breaths here. Four in child's pose. We'll take a pause. Okay, so if you've transitioned out of down dog, please come back. And we'll inhale and float the right leg up towards the ceiling. Bend the right knee and then stack the hips. You're finding a nice little hip opener here. But keep the weight distribution equal in the hands and keep the shoulders square at the end. Straighten the right leg, square the hips. Really feel that right glute wake up, okay? Exhale, pull the knee forward. And then work that right foot inside the right hand. Pivot the left heel down into warrior one feet. And then inhale up, become warrior one. Nice. Okay. 
Inner thighs are pulling towards each other, just like in Warrior Two. Exhale, soften the shoulders, widen the hands. Okay. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step back to flight position, please. Shoulder blades are glued to the back body. Inhale. Exhale, lower knees, chest, chin. Hug your elbows in, please. Inhale to your back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three breaths here. Okay, exhale completely. Inhale, left leg comes up towards the ceiling. Bend the left knee, stack the hips, open up. Straighten the left leg, square the hips. Feel your left glute. Exhale, pull the foot forward, place it inside the left hand. Right heel comes down, warrior one feet. When you feel steady here, rise yourself up into your rear one foot. Good, inhale. Exhale, settle into your hips, the body to your shoulders. Inhale again, please. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step back to the plank position. Good, inhale. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. We're just gonna do that tiny sequence again on each side, right? So exhale. Inhale, right leg up, bend the right knee, and then stack the hips. Feel the twist in your spine. Straighten the right leg, square the hips for the strength of your right glute. Exhale, pull the foot forward. Left heel comes down. Inhale, up you come, warrior one. You're strong, but you're soft, right? Keep playing with that, those two opposing forces. Inhale. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step back to your plank position, please. Nice, you guys. Inhale. Exhale, lower knees, chest, chin. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. Find your breath. Use it to ground you. Exhale. Inhale, left leg comes up towards the ceiling, three-legged dog. Bend the left knee, stack the hips. Straighten the left leg, square the hips. Exhale, foot comes forward, inside left hand, right heel pivots down. Up we come, warrior one. Beautiful, you guys, inhale. Exhale. Inhale again. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step back to plank position. Inhale. Exhale, lower knees, chest, chin. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. Ooh. And then find a resting shape, please. So maybe that's child's pose, maybe that's a seated meditation. Maybe that's down dog, okay? Feel the thing, notice the thing, let it go. Repeat. Steady breath. Please take a deep breath in and out. And we're going to rise up into some variation of a seated shape. Okay, so we're going to do another Kriya. <clears throat> um, so I'll give you some options for it and then I'll kind of demo it a little bit. So if it works in your body, you're going to come into hero shape. Okay, and we'll, I'm gonna get like really like particular about this stuff for a second if it works for you. The left big toe goes over the right big toe. Now, if this is excruciating for you, 
don't do this, okay? The other option here, <clears throat> again, you can bring a cushion under the bum if you want to. The other option for this Kriya is to be up on your knees with your toes hooked. So you're up like this, okay? If that's not gonna work for you either, then take a seat in front of the seat shape, okay? This one is a twisting action, so you wanna make sure you kind of feel stable here too, so. <clears throat> And as we move through the Kriya, if, if, it, if a, you want to do a different seated position, then you can transition there, okay? So you're going to take your arms out wide and then bring the tips of the fingers on top of the shoulders here like this, okay? And again, think about, right? So the shoulder blades are squeezing because we're trying to keep the heart open, but we're not extending the spine so much that we're crunching into the low back. So think more about just squeezing the shoulder blades, okay? And then you're going to twist to the left as you inhale through the nose and twist to the right as you exhale through the mouth. So it looks like this in my body. This is another one where you can like get going with it. And we're going to, in theory, do it for like three minutes. Okay? So face yourself. Okay? You guys are ready. Inhale left. Exhale mouth right. Keep the elbows in line with the shoulders. You can slow it down by all means if this is creating dizziness. But please stay with the movement and the breath. Center, extend the arms out into a V. Take a deep breath in. Pull up the pelvic floor. Bring the drifty the gaze up to the third eye. Hold. Keep the shoulders relaxed. Pulling prana up the spine. Hold, 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 hold. Exhale. Let the arms drift down. Ooh, okay. If you're up on your knees, go ahead and relax down. And maybe even shift to a seated shape where you feel more comfortable. And then just come into um, a seated shape and a little bit of a meditation here. But to, yeah, child's pose is good for you. Steady, steady. See if you can slow the breath down.
Okay, and then we'll take our clearing breath. and Inhale through the nose. Soft exhale up and up. Nice work, guys. Okay. Extend your legs out straight. And just relax here for a minute and then bounce the knees. Shake the feet. Right. Okay. And then we'll come into staff pose, right? So that's where you kind of shimmy your bum back and you might need to move the fleshy bits of your butt out of the way so your sits bones are really connected here. And the hands are on the floor, pretty much directly beneath the shoulders here, spreading the fingers wide. So you have to have this scoop of the low belly. And even if you do that, if you start to feel any pressure in the low back, please put something underneath your sits bone, okay? We want the shoulders above the hips and the toes are curled wide and back. And like we were doing with force, right? So you're not extending the back, but you're squeezing the shoulder blades to open up the heart space. Tuck the chin just a bit here. Keep this hinge of the hips as you start to walk your hands forward, coming into a fold. Do, 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 do. Okay, tailbone is really anchored. And I want you to inhale like you're, again, pulling energy up your spine through the crown of your head. So you're really tall through the back body. And then as you exhale, maybe pull a little more. Oh, that's okay. And then we'll do that again. So inhale, like you're pulling energy up the spine. So you'll kind of come into a halfway lift here. And then exhale, maybe you pull a little more. Maybe you tuck the chin. This time, stay in the fold. Take a deep breath into the back body. Exhale. And then keeping the tailbone anchored, start to walk your hands back and roll yourself upright. Okay. Stay here and rotate the palms, the fingertips back. Oh, this is a selfish one for me, guys. <laughs> okay, so you're just going to start to walk your hands forward to stretch through the forearms. And the palms of the hands. I don't know if you guys are into kayaking. It's a good one too for that. So we want to be mindful that the elbows aren't really locked. You got them kind of bent here. Shoulders are soft. Find your edge here and just breathe. Okay, and then slowly come back. And then bring the backs of the hands onto the floor with the Fingers pointed back and do the same thing. Just kind of elephant walk the hands forward. And you find your edge. And it might be fun um, to play around with what the shoulder blades are up to. So how do you feel any difference when you keep the shoulder blade and kind of let the neck grow a little longer? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then come back. And then we'll shake it out. Okay. Anything that feels good here, <clears throat> okay? And then, uh, that's done for like challenging stuff. Let's just come on to our left side. So you're gonna be on your forearm and the legs will be long here, okay? And we're gonna start with a side body stretch. So you're just gonna keep the forearm and the hand on the floor and then just let the ribcage start to sink down as the elbow, as the shoulder comes up towards the ear. So we're, we're gonna have stretching the side body here, okay? So. If this feels a little unstable, you can bend your knees a bit. You might even play around with that to see how it feels. Then the key with this shape is to really surrender the weight of the ribcage to gravity. Okay. And then, depending on how much you want to play with balance, you're going to keep the legs straight, you're going to bend them. And we're going to take this top leg, lift it up, and then start to pull the heel towards the bum and come into a quadricep stretch here, okay? So at this point, I want you to press down into the elbow a little bit to lift the shoulder up so you're a little more engaged here. And then you're wrapping the right glute down, okay? As you press the hand into the ankle and the ankle into the hand. So this is kind of an engaged shape here and also a back bend. If you want to play with balance more, you straighten that bottom leg, okay? Three deep breaths here.
Okay, and then slowly go ahead and release the legs. Okay, and then we'll just switch to the other side. So you can roll around, I'm gonna go over so it's facing this way, okay? And so again, we're starting with this, just this leg around. I call it the chase long stretch. I have no idea what it's like. Okay, so the form, of the elbow is underneath the shoulder. And you just sink the rib cage down as the shoulder comes up towards the ear. Breathe. Okay. And then press the elbow into the ground to lift yourself up so you're a little more engaged and stabilized through the shoulders. Maybe you bend the knees a little more here. And then lift the top leg, pull the heel towards the bum until maybe you grab it with your hand. Good. Okay. Now this is two things. This is a quadricep stretch. This is also a back bend, right? So the glute on the left side is wrapping down towards your knee. And you're pressing the ankle into the hand, the hand into the ankle. Stay soft, please. Next exhale, go ahead and let that go. Okay. And then we're just going to roll on to our backs. Mm. Maybe just as we started, you rock the knees from side to side. Okay. And then we'll just do a little bit of bridge practice and then we'll relax some more. So if your body is saying no thank you <laughs> with more strengthening in the posterior chain, the back body, then you can just relax here, right? Um, you can always do supported bridge, which if you don't have a block, you can use a pillow. Use a roll of blanket, okay? If you're with me with this though, we're gonna bring the feet closer to the bum. Elbows are bent, fingers are pointing up towards the ceiling. Press the low back into the floor and then slowly lift the hips up off of the floor, okay? And then when you get here, maybe you wriggle the shoulder blades underneath you some more so the chest is nice and open. So you can stay here. If you wanna work a little bit with opening up fascia in the ankles and the, and the feet, Maybe you come to the ball of your left foot for a moment, try to keep the hips square, lower that left heel down, and then come to the ball of the right foot, keep the hips square, Ooh. lower that right heel down. And then again, other side, left heel comes up, right heel comes up as left heel comes down. If you're really into it, maybe both, both heels come up for a moment, okay. Bring both heels down if they're up, please. And then exhale, lower the hips down. Rock the knees from side to side. So come to center, your knees are bent. A lot of you have done this stretch with me before. So hopefully it lands via Zoom teaching. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna rotate your right knee out to the side and then work the right heel towards your left butt cheek. So you're, you're wriggling the foot behind your left foot and then towards the, the left glute. So it's got, the, the goal here is to stretch like the hip flexor groin area on the right side. If you want to take a peek at me, you can. So some people like this is enough. If you want to feel this a little more deeply, you can start to pull the left knee up towards the chest, the body, keeping the left thigh nice and relaxed. And if you want even more, you can start to extend that left leg up towards the ceiling. <clears throat> okay, so there's various steps to it. I'm looking at, I think you guys have got it, <clears throat> okay? Keep the shoulders heavy. If you've got the left foot off the floor, please bring it back down. Then you're going to slide the right foot out from behind your other foot and then rotate the knee back upright. So then you're back with both feet on the floor. Okay, and then you'll just do the other side. So just butterfly the left knee out to the, to the left side and then tuck that foot behind your right heel. So in my body, the left heel actually connects with my right 
fruit. It may not for you. Okay. Don't push it. Okay. And we're different sides, right? So maybe one side is a little more open than the other. Okay, and then you might test the waters to see how it feels to pull the right knee towards the body. And you might straighten the right leg up towards the ceiling. Two more deep breaths here. Okay, the right foot is off the floor, please put it back on the floor. And then slide the left foot out from behind the right heel and roll the knee back up. So you're kind of moving through your hip joint mobility here too. And then one more time, windshield away from the knees from side to side. Okay, and let's uh, let's finish with the asana part with figure four. Okay, so bring the right ankle into the left thigh. And then maybe you gather the legs towards the body. Yeah, there are so many variations to this, right? So if you want to rock from side to side, you can. Sometimes it feels nice to kind of pulse squeeze the legs into the rigid body. If your knee is talking to you at all on that right side, please back off. You might also think about curling your right toes towards the right knee, see if that helps. Take a deep breath in, please. And exhale, release. Okay. And then just transition to the other side in your own way, right? So eventually, the left ankle comes on the right thigh. And you just deepen and explore. One more deep breath here. And then gently take yourself out of the stretch. And start the process of coming into Shavasana. So if there's anything else you want to do, any other movement that would feel good, a prop to help you feel more comfortable. Bonjour, 
Bring your attention back into your body, please. Start to deepen your breath. Before we start to move the body again, we come back to this practice of curiously finding like the, the baby. That's an eternal archetype that is you. It's so loving and passionate. Just delights in you exactly as you are. A deep nurturer. Hmm. And from that place, start to find movement for you. And very slowly and gently coming back to a seat. So I'm really liking this integrative practice where we do a few rounds of alternate nostril breathing just to kind of bring the right and left hemispheres together. So 
Um, in the energetic yogic perspective, you have your Inga and Pingala nadis and Shishunya, right? There are these energy channels that we we're just kind of integrating all. So we'll take our, our right hand, this works for you, okay? And you're gonna curl your middle fingers down. Let the thumb comes to the right nostril, middle uh, ring finger or pinky comes to left, okay? Take a full exhale out of both nostrils, please. Squeeze the right, inhale through the left. Close the left, open right, exhale. Inhale right. Close right, exhale left. Move at your own pace, please. Inhale left. And next time you exhale out of your right nostril, release the pressure. And if you'd like to join, we'll bring the palms of the hands together, hands of heart safety. We'll take a clearing breath and close with an ohm. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Out the mouth. And inhale to chant. Shanti, 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 peace, peace, peace. May you remember your true nature, which is love, trust, and reasonless joy. And may you remember that you are strong and wise. Thank you for being you and for sharing. Namaste.